Hi, I'd like to take a few minutes and explain the proper installation procedures for the IPEX Guardian Central Guard Leak Detection Station. I'm standing in front of a sample five zone panel. As you can see, we've got two lights associated with each of the zones. Each zone is clearly marked one through five. We also have as a standard offering a 10 zone panel and we would have an additional set of lights for uh, zones six through 10. We have an on off switch for the power, a power on light, as well as a keyed alarm switch. And right now I'll turn it so that the alarm is on. Right now we're going to go as if this panel has not been hooked up yet to anything. We'll open up the panel. And as you can see there isn't a whole lot to that. We have our transformer which takes our 120 incoming power and converts it to 24 volt. We have a set of relays which takes the signals from the sensor and sends them to the appropriate lights fuses, terminal blocks for our incoming power, as well as terminal blocks for the sensors. So the first step would be to take the sensor leads coming from each of the leak detection stations and run them up through a knockout in the panel. And as you can see, we've got blue, brown, and black leads coming in. The terminal blocks are numbered accordingly, sensors one through five and they also are color coded, blue, brown, and black. Black to black, brown to brown, blue to blue. The jumpers that you see shown here on zones uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4 would be installed if you are not using all of the zones on the panel and what you need to do is just take uh, some standard uh, 18 gauge wire and jumper from the black over to the blue and uh, this will put that zone into a neutral state until such time that you will use it. Once you have all of your sensors connected, we're going to come up here and go to our incoming power. You're going to take your 120 volt. It's clearly labeled in the back. You may not be able to see it, but white would be your line voltage, uh, black for your neutral, and green for your ground. Just below that are the two fuses I spoke about earlier. The top fuse is for your 120 volt incoming power and the bottom fuse would be for any of the 24 volt uh, power. Uh, after you hook it up, you'll just want to take these relays and push them in. Make sure that they're secure. They're a plug-in style relay and sometimes during shipment uh, they may become loose. So I'll close the panel. and power it up. Uh, you can see right now we have the green light showing that we have power coming into the panel. It may be difficult to see but right now the white light is lit um, brightly and the red light is, is um, not lit. This indicates that this zone is functioning properly. I'm going to grab a sensor that we have hooked up right now and use my finger to put it into an alarm. As you can see, as I trigger the sensor, the red light comes on, the white light dims, which is probably hard to see, as well as the horn goes off. I'm going to turn the horn off now. On the sensor, in a normal operating state, you are going to see the LED light on the base is lit. This is a fail-safe design so that in the event this cord gets severed or if our incoming power gets severed we're going to know that it's going to be shown up on the panel. Also on each sensor is a small orange potentiometer screw. This adjusts the sensitivity of the sensor. Uh, they are all preset from the factory prior to being shipped but in the event you need to set it, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Here I have a tube of clear PVC with some water in there. 
Uh, this would be typical of an above ground drip leg application. And the sensor, when it's up against an area where there isn't fluid uh, there, you can see that the red light is on and it is not detecting it. As I move it down to the level where the water or the fluid is, you can see the red light goes off, it sends a signal back to the panel, and the horn goes on. Now I'm going to turn the alarm off right now. You should not, or the sensor should not pick it up immediately. As you can see, I am just barely getting to the level of the water and it is picking it up. This means that the sensor is too uh, uh, sensitive. So what we're going to do is take a small screwdriver which comes uh, with the panel and turn it counterclockwise to make it less sensitive. In this case, I'm going to go about three full turns and what we want to have happen is that about a third of the sensor be at the fluid level before it picks it up. So as I'm moving it down, you can see I've got just about a third of the sensor before the light's going off. So now this sensor is properly adjusted. Generally, you do not require any readjustments. However, sometimes conditions are such that you might need to adjust them. That's about all there is to the leak detection panel. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact the factory at 1-800-490-0077.